Hey, Fedheads, welcome to another episode of Sharing Our Pairings. This is Sharing Our Pairings, episode 68, 50 Node Who Pairings. I'm your host, John the Cigar Surgeon. We broadcast around the world on the Cigar Federation Network and picked up in the Armed Forces Radio Network. We appreciate you tuning in wherever you are in the world, wherever you're stationed. We hope you're staying safe. Thanks very much for all our podcast listeners who are listening after the fact. We know you guys are out there in spades. And uh, shalom to all the people in Israel who are apparently listening by the thousands. I don't know why it's such a big deal in Israel, but we appreciate you tuning in. I'm joined by my special co-host this week, Paul Asadorian from Stogie Geeks. Paul, what's going on, brother? Hey, John. How's it going? Thank you for having me on Sharing Your Pairings. It's uh, always wonderful to do the show because we get to sit around, smoke cigars, drink alcoholic beverages, and just chat with each other. It's a pretty good gig, isn't it? It is. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I like it. It's kind of how I do uh, my podcast. This is actually my third podcast today <laughs> so, T- today I, like not not in total third podcast today today yes yes you're a busy man it's lots of fun you know they're addicting once you get one podcast you just you, you want more they're like tattoos that way yes exactly so of course we are pairing um, some 1502 cigars we were supposed to have uh, Enrique Sanchez but we had some technical dif- difficulties unfortunately and weren't able to get him on uh, hopefully we'll have him on in a future show sorry about that Enrique but uh, I am pairing um the 1502 Black Gold, it, uh, I, I had it down as a torpedo, but uh, you know, I must have been testing my secret sauce here and before the show because it is not a torpedo at all. It's a Toro. Um, what I really like about this is a, it's a box press, and uh, I think at the time, Enrique, when he came out with all of his cigars being box pressed, I was really impressed because I'm a big fan of the box press. I find that they kind of you know, sit in your mouth more comfortable. What, now, you're, you're smoking something quite Yeah, I'm going to bring it up. Uh, because I thought Enrique was going to be on, so of course I prepared nothing about this cigar because I was going to let the man who created it talk about it. Well, I'm, um, while you do that, I'm gonna I'm gonna fill some space here because I did not write down. I mean, I have some notes on my 1502, but I was doing the same. I was kind of gonna let the master talk about it. Right. Uh, all, all I know about this is it's uh, obviously Nicaraguan puro, and that it's got a double binder, and that I love the 1502 Emerald, Ruby, and Black Gold. And last year when they released the Lancero, um, so for me in order, um, I like the the Ruby, then the Emerald and the Black Gold are kind of tied, but I found that was reversed with the Lancero. The the Emerald was just absolutely blew me away. But you're smoking uh, something uh, pretty, yeah, pretty special. The, I'm uh, very jealous. The 1502 XO Toro. This is a, a limited release uh, from Enrique uh, Global Premium Cigars, and these retail for seventeen seventy five. The wrapper binder and filler is not disclosed. They did make one thousand five hundred and two boxes of ten for a total of fifteen thousand twenty cigars. Each box nice. is numbered, and Enrique, uh, when we interviewed him on the Stoic Geek Show, said that he has the box number fifteen o two. That seems appropriate. I mean, yes. if it's your baby, you know, keep keep your box. Now, for my drink, John, bear with me. Um, I don't know if you've done cocktails or how much, what kind of cocktails you've covered on the show. We well, let me think. I did a I did a take on a dark and stormy that was uh, yep. kind of funky. Um, you know, we really need to have you on. We were kind of talking before the show started that we need to have you on for a uh, cocktail 2.0 because <clears throat> you guys do cocktails over at Stogie Geeks all the time. We do. We have a bar and studio and lots of people who uh, make cocktails, and I've learned from people who are way better at making cocktails than myself. But tonight I'm going to do a uh, drink I've been wanting to try. Um, we're thinking about making it our Stogie Geek signature cocktail, so you kind of giving you an exclusive. Ooh. You heard it here first. Now, is it um, grapefruit that I'm seeing um, there? So that is a blood orange. Ooh. Blood oranges are, in fact, in season right now. Uh, and they make a great start to an old fashioned. So basically, an old fashioned is a uh, slice of orange, maraschino cherry, bitters, and some kind of sugar component. So I'll just very quickly show you how I make an old fashioned. I've got the orange in the glass uh, already, and I'm just going to drop a maraschino cherry in there. So it's a very unsophisticated way to make the. Just how we like it, Paul. It's very unsophisticated. Uh, then I'm going to take some bitters. This is the old standby, Angostura bitters. Yep. Um, I like to use seven or eight or nine <laughs> dashes. I like it. Bitters is good. Nice. There's all different kinds of bitters. Uh, I'll use the classic Angostura in this case. And I, for my sugar component, I mixed up some honey. 
This is uh, about a 70-30 mix of honey and water. Uh, I use warm water to kind of dilute the honey, and I got these little squirt bottles that I bought on Amazon. I keep this in the refrigerator, so otherwise bugs get in it and stuff. So yep. I'm just going to pour some, uh, some honey syrup in there. Now, using straight honey, not recommended. Um, that will just kind of gum up in there, and you really won't get the sugary component. Then it looks, looks like you used about a, maybe a tablespoon in there, roughly. Yeah, about that, about that. You can kind of customize to your, uh, to your liking. Now, I'm going to muddle. This is a very important part of the drink. And when you muddle, you want to muddle the cherry, you want to muddle the orange. You don't want to muddle the orange peel because those oils come off and it'll make it bitter. So I'm just going to squish the orange down, release the juices. <clears throat> Excuse me, give a couple of presses to the cherry. So do a little muddling there. This is my, my bar multi-tool knife, spoon, measuring cups. It's awesome. That's great. <clears throat> and now we'll add some ice. Ice, again, very unsophisticated, using my fingers a lot. Get that ice in there. And then you want to, I'm going to top mine with some Mount Gay Black Rum. Nice. This is the Eclipse Black. <coughs> Excuse me. This is a very, uh, like, whiskey-like rum, which is why it goes well in the old-fashioned. You can actually find the recipes, some different variations on the recipe on Mount Gay's website. Um, I was poking around there the other day. Uh, and then stir, I, I mean, stir very gently. I don't like to mix up <clears throat> too much of that sugar. And I'll tell you why. <coughs> oh, sorry. I need a drink. So that's what the problem is. <laughs> I'll tell you why you stir gently. <clears throat> and why I love the old-fashioned, well, one reason, um, is when you first start drinking this cocktail, you're going to get mostly, now you can top it with seltzer water, but you're going to get mostly the spirit. <clears throat> then as you progress, it's going to get sweeter and sweeter and sweeter. So like, <clears throat> like a cigar changes from start to finish, yep. so does the drink, giving us some different dimensions. And that's essentially an old-fashioned. That was a fantastic that was a fantastic demonstration. I don't know that we've ever had a demonstration Ooh, on good. our show that good. And uh, That's really good. Unfortunately, Paul, you've set the bar high now. So <laughs> when we have you on for the cocktail show, <laughs> our audience is going to be right, expecting so that really good. <clears throat> when we do the cocktail show, I'll be at my proper bar oh. in the studio that has all the bar tools, usually all the stuff that we need to make cocktails, except right. when we run out of fruit. But for that show, we'll make sure we have everything. And we'll make all kinds of cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like every podcast needs a bar, and that'll definitely be on my list of things to do when I when I eventually move into my studio. Uh, I am also pairing rum. I'm not going as fancy and as involved as you are. I'm starting out with uh, an old standby for me. It, this is not a... You would be shocked. This down in Cuba, this is a legendary elixir to Cuba. You can get this down in Cuba for about seven kooky, <clears throat> or kooks which is the uh, convertible unit of currency. And that roughly works out to about $8 American. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's absurd. It's only seven years, but um, it's fantastic. I mean, if you like something that's kind of more syrupy, I mean, it's not as refined, right? Like this isn't an, a, a well-aged, you know, sipping high-end rum, but this is a rum that if you just feel like a rum, it's a hot day, you need something to quench your thirst, it's, it's a fantastic choice. It's only 34%. Still aged in American barrels. Um, they actually filter this through a combination of silica sand and activated carbon. And then what's what's kind of funky, and it might turn some of the rum drinkers out there off, is it's flavored with grape syrup, and then they soak it in raisins before they bottle it, of all things. Really? That's mm -hmm. interesting. Uh, do they... They must ferment it, though, because it's a different color? They do. <clears throat> so the, the, so they ferment, the, do they ferment it in raisins? Like the, raisins the, are actually, they, the raisins are actually av added after the fermentation is completed in the barrels. So okay. they, yeah. And um, it, it, it does give it a, a grapey, raisiny taste to it. Mm -hmm. But it's, I mean, I, I, I would liken it to a rum liqueur. Like it's kind of in between a, a sipping rum and a liqueur. So it's not as thick and syrupy, but it's well on its way. And that's why I say, you know, on a, and I've got my ice baller in there, on a hot day, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a good thirst quencher, although little bit sweet so John is rum it's that's made the same way as all of the other spirits mm -hmm. except they start with so what do they put in the mash right because whiskey and tequila right whiskey and scotch is like a barley mash or that's rye right. mash for making rye whiskey yep tequila as I found we interviewed some uh, folks from Senor Rio 
tequila is the agave plant, but it's just the root. And just they the chop root. up the root, and then they put the root in the mash. So what is it for rum? Is it the sugar cane? So it, so I was looking up the history of rum because I, you know, I've talked about rum. I've had rum before, and mm. I didn't actually know the process. I was like, well, you know, as far as I'm aware, all spirits kind of start their life the same, and they do. The, the process is really the same. You can make, you know, whether you're making vodka or scotch or bourbon, yeah. it all starts the same. So the history behind rum, and hopefully our audience will find this really interesting, is – when the the planta- they had the sugarcane plantations in Barbados and in, in the, um, in, on the islands, um, when they were making the sugar, they were getting just a gargantuan amount of, um, uh, shoot, now I've, my brain is complete, molasses. Yes. So they were getting just a ton of molasses. <clears throat> and the thing is, at that time, this is an off product. Like they, hadn't, they, they couldn't do anything with it. They were feeding it to animals. They were putting it in like planters. And eventually they just started pouring it into the sea because they're, they're generating like 10 times as much molasses for every hmm. couple of pounds of sugar. And then eventually, because obviously there's a lot of slavery at the time, uh, someone got wise to the fact that you could take this molasses, you could mix it with a little bit of sugar cane, and you could start fermenting it. And... Um, so it's, pardon me, I shouldn't say sugar cane. It was some of the juices that, that got siphoned off of the cane juice. Mm-hmm. They mixed that in with the molasses and it started that fermentation process, kicked it off, and then they boiled it and then and then they started distilling. And that was kind of, you know, obviously it was pretty primitive back in the 17th century, but that's, you know, that's essentially the base for all rums is, uh, is sugar cane, or at least most rums, I should say, because some rums use a different right. process, but yeah. <clears throat> so it's the molasses that come as a byproduct from making the sugar that they f- uh, ferment in a mash tun, right? Mm-hmm. And then they distill it. And then they distill and it. And then they age it in a barrel. Or are there, there are clear rums, like Bacardi is a clear rum. It is. So that would be not put in the barrel, right? That just comes right from distillation. That's right. And goes, like a Bianco tequila was the same, the same yep. way. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And there's some Havana Club that's the same way. They, they, um, they store it in a steel drum so it doesn't get any color or flavor yeah. imparted from the wood. And, you know, that's fine if you want to, <clears throat> obviously, I don't know how much of a masochist our audience is out there, but, you know, you could certainly sip it. But uh, it's really meant for mixing with drink, and it's, you know, intended to be inexpensive because you're not paying money to store it in barrels and, and lose money over time. I will use a clear rum like Bacardi if I'm making a Long Island iced tea. Because mm. it's mixed in with other uh, different types of liquor and you're putting Coke on top of it. So mm. that's, you know, the basic It's pretty low rent. Long Island. Yeah, you're not really tasting a lot of that, a lot of that rum. Jeff, Jeff in our uh, chat room says he's pretty sure that the uh, base for Florida Canyon is actually sugar rather than molasses. So that's kind of interesting. I should have, um, I should have read that up. Actually, one of the things our audience can do is to go to Florida Canyon. Uh, they've got a really, really great website that's got a video on the process. It, you know, you would think, and, and this is probably really terrible of me, but you'd think being a Nicaraguan company, you, you wouldn't necessarily expect much out of the website, right? You don't think of Nicaragua as being this IT mecca. But mm-hmm. their website is phenomenal. Like it is absolutely first class. They've got all these cool videos and behind the scenes, and uh, definitely recommend our audience check that out. Excellent. Just to remind you to our audience that you're tuned into Sharing Our Pangs, mm-hmm. episode 68. I'm your host John, the cigar surgeon, joined by our special co-host Paul Asadorian from Stogie Geeks. We're talking about the 1502 cigars. I'm pairing the black gold. And Paul, I'm very jealous about your your 1502XO there. With how, this, how old um, is that tobacco? There's 18 year old tobacco in this 1502XO, That's and crazy. it just has some amazing flavors. Um, just, I mean, when you sniff the foot, it's almost like you get the same flavors um, when you smoke the cigar, and it's just absolutely amazing. Um, you know, I think in our Stoey Geeks rating scale, it's you know. I don't know. It's maybe a try one, I guess. Oh, Enrique. Hey, there Enrique you are. Enrique Sanchez. <laughs> hey, how you doing, guys? Good. How are, are you? Are you talking about me? I was talking about uh, this, you know, this cigar is just okay. This 1502XO, um, you know, it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> I've, I've heard that the back was in there one or two years yes. old. No, oh, I was way, actually I... Um, just commenting, Enrique, and it's nice to see you, uh, as always, that... Um, when I sniff the foot of this cigar, I just get some amazing aromas. It's like somewhat floral. There's sweetness. There's just all this stuff going on. And when I smoke it, 
I get like a similar experience. Like it's very consistent. It's just all these different kinds of flavors going on. Very unique. Uh, this is the second one that I've had, and they've both been equally as good. Uh, as a, in our Stoy Geeks rating system, a fight truck Norris uh, all day long. All day long. <laughs> and this is better than the first one that I smoked because uh, I think it's got even like a little more age. All those tobaccos are melting yeah. together. Um, I saw you had one for breakfast, and I was, I was kind of jealous that I wish I had more to smoke at breakfast. Breakfast and then one for, for, for dinner. So that's, that's good. It. <laughs> today, today has been a good day, you know. Be the first be with you. So that's... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, Enrique, thanks so much for joining the show. Uh, sorry we had some technical difficulties to start there. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start us out with some audience questions here because we're, uh, we're a couple minutes in. And uh, this one's kind of for Paul and Enrique. Bob Dog wants to know, he says, uh, Paul, is it true that you have inside knowledge about who the best smelling man in the cigar yeah. industry is? So here's the thing, Enrique. Here is my question for you. I want to know, like, what kind of soaps you use in the shower and what kind of cologne that you wear to garnish the title, the best smelling man you know, in the cigar industry. Now, we all kind of stink of cigars, so I'm not sure that title is quite as... Uh, uh, luxurious, luxurious as it sounds, but uh, it, you, well, I want to know what, what's your secret, Enrique, to being the best you know, smelling I, man in the cigar industry? It's funny because uh, maybe a month ago, my wife came from, a, from one of his, her business trip, and she came with a, a, a soap, a tobacco soap for me. Ah. And, and, and today it was the first day. First day, it's very famous. It, 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 it's this brand, Italian brand, I can't remember right now. So today I open it and I did took a shower with you. I was like, it smells great. I love it. So you know, <laughs> now, now that you mentioned that one, it's like this must be a coincidence. <laughs> so it's Italian tobacco soap. That's the secret, apparently. It's uh, it's it's um, very unique. So you know, the and of course, you know, I'm from Nicaragua, so you know, in Nicaragua we all smell good. So that's a good thing. That's that's good. It's it's I've true. Heard that. Actually. I've heard that everyone in Nicaragua smells very good. Yes. <laughs> now I've heard that the um, I've heard that that soap is actually made from the uh, flower. So they actually take the flower from the tobacco plant to make that soap. Because I was reading up on that today for um, shampoo and beard soap. Someone was talking about that. Mm-hmm. But, but of course we are uh, smoking and drinking and uh, drinking one of your favorite beverages, uh, Enrique Rum. Uh, I'm going All with right. the. Um, the non-Nicaraguan rum, just just to start, I'll get to the Nicaraguan rum, don't worry. Um, but I'm going with the Legendario, which is uh, actually going really fantastically with this uh, 1502 Black Gold. Black Gold. Um, mm -hmm. This is, this is I was telling Paul earlier, this is kind of almost like a rum liqueur. It's very, very sweet. And I think it goes really well with the 1502 because the 1502 is a full-bodied cigar. You know, it's got a lot of flavor. Um, and I think the, the nice thing about this rum is it kind of imparts some sweetness. It takes a little bit of earthiness away, resets your palate. And then, you know, I take a couple sips. Well, I've taken more than a few sips. But uh, I take a couple sips of rum, come back to the cigar, and, you know, I'm, I'm ready to go. I tell you what, rum is a great pairing with this 1502 XO. Um, I, I don't know that I would pair this with anything much stronger than, like, the Mount Gay Black Rum. Uh, in terms of body, because um, I wouldn't want to overpower it, but it really yes. goes well with that kind of, uh, it's kind of, I call it like a scotch-like rum, the Mount Gay Black mm. uh, is what I'm drinking now. Uh, this would pair well with uh, a mojito. I like to use dark rum in my mojitos. Mm. So I'm kind of I'm kind yeah, of on that nice. on that side of the fence. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> I don't know, my other favorite rum drink is uh, the Dark and Stormy, as you were talking about. Love ginger beer, ginger beer has got a little too much spice, a little too much bite. It would impede in your cigar. So I would stick to mojito. Yeah. I would stick to my rum old fashioned, which I made tonight, uh, and I would stick to like a good medium, medium bodied rum would go perfect with the cigar. Uh, I do the same. I uh, anything that would not compete against my cigar. Mm. Uh, that, that when I, I do it, like to enjoy my my spirits, I like something to help me to enjoy my cigar better and not to uh, make it more. Competitive in the flavoring aroma profile. But th I think that makes a lot of sense. I mean, you're talking about a cigar that you know, in some cases, well, talking about my first rum, this this the 1502 Black Gold is worth more than this bottle of rum. So <laughs> you know, obviously, I don't want to be blowing out the flavor profile of the mm. cigar for the of rum. I'm not. drinking the the rum to to accent the cigar. 
Um, we've actually got a good question here for you, Enrique, from uh, Garen Fry. And Garen Fry wants to know, um, do you ever use spirits to pair with during your, your blending process? Is there ever a part of the blending process where you'll, you'll incorporate spirits? You know, it's very interesting. Uh, normally when I blend, uh, what I use is chocolate and water. Uh, chocolate, it, that cleans your palate very well. That's why you use it at Latin dessert. Uh, it, it's a way to neutralize your palate and, and, bring, and, bring, and try to bring your flavor back after too many, many cigars you've been trying, and of course water. But when I blend, remember, I normally I'm not in the blending room. I don't want to be blending or, or trying my cigars fresh out or, or the handle that somebody is rolling because six months from that point, they're not going to taste the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when I do blend, in which now I, I, I have a, a lot more knowledge with tobacco, I already know what I want. I already know in my head what I need. So I, 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 I can blend that in my head, tell the factory to make them, put it in the aging room, and once they're ready, either ship it to, to me or I go to Nicaragua, find excuse to go back home, of course, mm-hmm. and, and, and go to Nicaragua and mm-hmm. try them themselves so I can do the tweets and, and, and see what, what, where to go from there. Uh, normally, when I took the, the, the time in, in, in my house or somewhere, and I like, I like to pair it uh, with something, I will, it more, most likely it will be scotch. Uh, scotch it has that power of neutralizing your palate. Yeah. Uh, it, might, it does not compete, it doesn't have power and does not compete against your cigar. So it does take a lot of the flavor of, of the cigar. It helps you to enjoy more the cigar. Actually, uh, the old guard of the master blenders, they used to use uh, old scotch to blend. Uh, so they, you know, clean their palate and, and throw the scotch away. I would not throw the scotch away. I would do it myself. So after, <laughs> after, after, after the third or fourth, I would be like, "Yeah, it's ready. Production. Let's go for it." To mix it, I would be like, "What the hell did I do?" <laughs> now that's interesting. Using scotch as a as a palate cleanser. What what would you say? Like, at least lately, what what is your kind of go to for scotch? Because of course, you know, I know Paul loves the scotch. I love the scotch. Normally for me, it will be easily uh, uh, Macallan. One of my favorites is always the Macallan 15. It's easy going, uh, right to the point. And I, I do enjoy it very much. Uh, in, in the Johnny Walker line, you know, the black label, uh, or even a double black, a little, double black and a little more oaky. So the black label, it's a little more neutral in the aspect. It's a, a comfort zone. Uh, uh, so th- 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 there, there are many. I mean, the, the, the type of the type of scotching. Uh, it's always fun trying to look for the one that pairs well with that cigar in specific. Mm. So it, it's always fun. Well, you know, talking about scotch, because uh, we're way off topic now. But I, when we're talking about scotch, I just can't help myself. There's a particular scotch, the uh, Glenlivet Nadura, and uh, Ooh, I've, I've had that before. It, it, you know. There's a couple different versions of it, but the the normal Nadura, which is I think it's an it's an 18 year old. I want to say it's either no, it's a 16 year old. So I was going to say it's 60. Yes, yeah, in between 16. the 12 and 18. Yeah. yeah. And and I have found that for pairing with cigars, and I've paired it with Nicaraguan cigars, I've paired it with Cuban cigars, and I've found that that whiskey, by far, is like probably my top five for pairing with cigars because it does such a great job of accenting the tobacco. And you know, instead of accenting the drink, and it's just got enough strength to again reset your palate without taking away anything from the cigars. That's kind of been that's kind of been my go-to. Uh, so that's also you know, it was interesting. Uh, it was uh, in March when we did our tour for uh, for all the uh, New Jersey, New York, Delaware area. Uh, we have a friend, Steve, uh, in New Jersey. He's a very good friend of mine. He's been telling me, "Hey, come to the house when you're in town." Uh, and, and for the last two years, we've always been rushing. We couldn't go. So this year, it's like, you know what? Let's take the afternoon. Let's go to Steve's house. Uh, he has a main cave in, in his basement. Uh, great ventilation. Everything perfect. But what, what amused me, it was that the type of, of, of alcohol or, or spirit he had. I mean, we only tried one part of the war. <laughs> the part, I, 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 I would, it was only sipping, so it was just trying. So I, I, there were, I think, 14 or 16 different type of, of spirits, um, mainly in scotch. Uh, I mean, from from Macallan Ruby, Macallan 25, uh, to uh, to I will finish it up with, with Louis the 13. But just give you an example. Mm. So we were enjoying 15 to XO, and treating ourselves so nice with all these kind of spirits. And, and 
there were two actually they, they got my attention because one I did hear the story you know have you ever heard that that uh, a, a ship that was going in expedition the Antarctica and they get stuck and like hundred years after they find the ship and there was there, there, there were scotch in the ship mm -hmm. so they duplicate the scotch he had one of those bottles. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. When I saw that one, it's like, I know the story, but I never see one of the bottles. I was like, oh, wow. of course, he let me sip it, and I was like, that's awesome. And on the other one, I, I can't even remember the name of it, he had a, a, a bottle from, a, a scotch bottle from before Prohibition. Wow. I was like, I want to try just, just, just to <clears throat> you know what, what it tastes like. So it's it's always fun when, when, when you looking for what to enjoy good with what cigar. It's part of the fun. Yeah, yeah it, it's interesting. You know, we talk about scotch and how everyone kind of gravitates towards scotch. Uh, to bring it back to rum, uh, rum's kind of like got a bad reputation with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. When you talk to people outside of cigars, and most people in cigars are familiar with the, familiar with the culture of Nicaragua, Dominican. They're like, oh, yeah, like rum. Everyone, you know, the, all the people who blend cigars and make cigars talk about rum and I think as cigar smokers, we've grown uh, to have an appreciation for rum because we've been educated. But of course. you step outside of cigars and you tell, like, I go to my, my friends or my father-in-law or my neighbor, and they're like, rum? They're like, no, that's like, you know, they instantly think of, like, Captain Morgan mm -hmm. and that time in college where they mixed it with Coke and had, like, 18 <laughs> of them. <laughs> And like got sick and passed out on the front lawn in the bushes. And I'm like, no, 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 no. That's like, rum. I'm like, here, try this. And they're like, that's rum. I'm like, ah, see, now you're expanding your mind. I like the yeah. uh, Abuelo, is a great rum. All right. Uh, Diplomaticos, mm -hmm. great rum. Very inexpensive, great rum. Uh, one of mine on, on tap tonight that I'm going to try is Old Monk. Old Monk is like, I don't know, yeah. ni $19 a bottle. Um, but it's a great mixing rum. It's even a great sipping rum as, uh, as well. The other nice part is, as the prices of scotch. Now, Enrique, you talked about some very, very expensive uh, scotches, upwards of $300 a bottle. Bourbon is heading in that <clears throat> direction. Um, you see bourbon now uh, starting to get up there with the Pappy Van Winkles with the scotches yeah. of the world. Yep. Rum, <clears throat> as far as I know has kind of leveled out price-wise and tends to be affordable. And you can get ones that are sipping and ones that mix great in cocktails, making it just uh, an absolutely great spirit. The point is, people need education, I think, uh, outside of cigars to really enjoy rum. So, Which is why I'm glad we did, we're did. we doing the show on, on rum uh, today, John. Of course. Uh, and you did, you did forget mention of Flor de Caña. Which yes. had not been <clears throat> forgotten. John has that. That is a staple. <laughs> That's a staple sipping rum. You know, yep. it's very it good. And what's the price point on the eighteen? Uh the eighteen. I think it's what thirty-eight, forty-five dollars, something oh, like that. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. I mean, that you yeah. think about like what other spirit? Think about spirits. What other spirit that's been aged for a minimum of eighteen years could you buy for less than fifty dollars? Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, you Very can true. think about the most affordable whiskey that's that's been aged for 18 years. Guaranteed minimum starting point for that is $90. Of minimum. course. I, I, you know something interesting about that in rum because you, you can smell rum, you can see the, texture, the, the color of the rum, you can see the rum, but you also can touch the rum. Do you know that? No. I'm not sure you mean oh. by that. It, touching the rum. Mm. Actually, it's... Uh, uh, we, we, back in high school, we get a, a wrong 101 class, so it's uh, we always learn how to do it. Just kidding. <laughs> but you learned about rum, rum in high important. school in Nicaragua? I needed to go to high school well, in Nicaragua. I know, huh? Yeah, of course. I mean, that's, uh, we, 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 it's, it's the language of the free. We can do whatever we want. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Those but, missed out watching. The, if you're not watching the video, you had to see Enrique's face when he said that. <laughs> <laughs> But it's true, I mean, you can actually touch the rum. When you have a well-aged rum, you can put rum in your hands and you can move it like oh, this yeah, yeah. and touch it. It will mm. never get sticky. Yeah. It, 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 which is, if it's a well-aged rum. Some other people, they put chemicals or some, some things in the rum to make it look aged. And that's mm. when you get a sticky part. Imagine, if it sticks in your hand, what it, how are you going to stick it in your, in your system? So right, it's right. one of the things... 
I mean, you don't have to get the entire bottle and drop it in your hands, but you know, get to use your two fingers, with it, just just to touch it and see the texture of the rum. It will tell you a lot about the rum. Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah, it was similar when we were talking about tequila on a recent Stogie Geek show. That tequila kind of has the same bad reputation. And to build on what you were saying, Enrique, they said the same thing. They'll add a lot to the tequila afterwards to make right. cheaper tequila. And rum is you know, no different than when they'll put some additives in it. But that's not real rum, right? And, and, uh, and you can see tequila. I mean, it, a lot of people, when you say tequila, you're thinking about like, okay, cheers on what? Mm-hmm. But all, you make in Mexico you don't do that. In, in tequila, it's sipping. You have yeah, to drink. Absolutely. They give you they give you a, a, a tequila shot and you sip on it. That's it. Because a good tequila, it, it, it must be, it should be very smooth. That does it doesn't. You don't have to throw it away and then, then get the juice or get the lime or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. The salt and the lime and the salt and the lime and the yeah. yeah. You do that, again, a, something a, a, in college a, yeah. where you end up passed out and you wake up in the bushes the next morning. But right? of course, we all been in college. We know how how our college budget goes, so <laughs> I'm sure we're not looking for the best tequila, right. the best rum. That's so it. it's uh, it happens. But later on, you know, it's little details you you learn. Little little off topic, but I actually had the opportunity to visit a, a distillery, a um, tequila distillery, while I was in Mexico. It was a bit of a bus ride. But uh, I, you know, wasn't very knowledgeable on tequila, and I wanted to go to the distillery for an education on tequila, and I was very well educated. Even the, you know, what I would call the entry-level tequila that they had at this place was, I would say, 10 times better than the best tequila I've ever had in my life. And we ended up coming away with two, three bottles. And, I mean, this was absolutely the, their mid-range and high-end stuff. I would put it 100% on par with a good sipping scotch because it was just, yeah. it was it was clean. It was, everything that I know about tequila was absolutely turned on its ear. Mm. 100%. Yeah, so, so now the question is, how many of those bottles are still alive? That's right. Are they all empty now, John? Well, see, I have, I have an acquisition problem. I don't have a drinking problem. I have an acquisition problem. So <laughs> some see. of those bottles are still alive. But uh, I want to move rapidly on to my Florida Canyon here. So all right. yeah, I'm going to get should, into um, my well, second drink, rum here. i got to drink faster. Yeah, uh, I, I am going – I'm saving the best for last. I've got my Florida Canyon 18 for last here. So I just want to quickly go over my Havana Club. This, this is a pretty low-age statement rum. This is a seven-year – now, one of the things that I do like about this is that it's because there isn't, an, uh, as far as I'm aware, there's no um, internal legislation regarding rum. So you can put an age statement on a rum, and sometimes that means, like scotch, it's the minimum age statement. Sometimes that not, that's not necessarily the case. Now, the nice thing about this Havana Club 7 is that the seven year is, in fact, minimum seven year. So uh, seven years is the youngest rum that they have in the bottle, which is how they deal with whiskey. And some of the rum they have in there is 14 years. This is this is really good. Um, I've had much better rum. Florida Canyon 12, obviously for me, is one of the most outstanding sipping rums and kind of the the starting point I think for sipping rums. Um, you know, yes. you can you can do the the Florida Canyon seven, but uh, for me, you know, I've become a bit of a, a bit of a snob when it comes to rum. So for me, the sipping rums kind of started at the, at the 12. So yes. this seven we're, is we're good. We're moving around too now. I'm sorry, my my uh, uh, sales and executive producer for Stogie Geeks and Security Week is here with me. Uh, was also my neighbor helping me drink, and I'm telling yes. him that it's round two. He needs to it is round faster. two. That, it that's is a good two. help. <laughs> <laughs> so um, they they describe this as being exceptionally smooth, which it, which it is. Um, they describe notes of cocoa, vanilla, sugar cane, chestnut, caramelized fruit flavors. I'm getting a little bit of the fruit flavors, and that's kind of one of the things I like out of some Cuban rums is I get a, a little bit of the fruit flavors. Um, but, I mean, this tastes like... Uh, <laughs> Like like a rum at this price point. That is, it's it's tasty, but it's not as as nuanced or as you know sophisticated. I think is the word I would be looking for. Mm. For me, you know, like a Florida Canyon 12 was kind of my introduction to high end sipping rum. And I think, you know, we talk about high end. You know, a bottle of Florida Canyon 12 I think is like twenty five dollars. So you know, to to your point, Paul, I know I've run into people in the past who have said, well, I'm not going to pour a sipping rum 
because rum is gross or you know they're typically used right. to to a white rum that's that's uh that's very basic it hasn't been aged in uh, in yeah. oak it's been aged in uh in in steel drums which doesn't impart any flavors doesn't impart any nuances um so for me this is uh this is okay but it's it's not florida kenya mm. so I hear for you. um for our second round i did uh this is a seven-year-old blended rum it's called old monk oh. now Keith and I are going to drink it with a couple of cubes uh, in the glass, uh, which is one way to drink it. Which is, Does that okay. have like three X's? Yes. It's a triple X rum. Right. It's not like a movie rating, Enrique. I think oh, okay, okay. <laughs> it's a rum, not a movie. It's, it's still safe for our Forces <laughs> Radio Network segment. That's right. That's right. It's just three X's. I forget where this, where this is made. Hold on. I, I used to know. It should uh, said there. It says uh, India. Maybe that's where it's imported, or maybe it is made in India. Interesting. India <clears throat> with rum. I never felt that. Interesting. Yeah. Um, this is very yeah. inexpensive. Seventeen or eighteen dollars uh, a bottle. Uh, yeah, and it is. Uh, it is from uh, India, uh, and imported by uh, Eastern Liquors in uh, New York. And I tell you what, it's good to sip it um, by itself. I recommend you do that. <clears throat> excuse me first I like to use Old Monk in my rum cocktails especially a mojito it makes an absolutely fabulous mojito I'm a huge fan of the dark rum uh, in the mojito <coughs> yeah. so that's interesting well salute so I'm just going to get to another audience question while we take some sips of our beverage. Enrique, I know we, you and I have talked about this in the past because uh, I very rarely run across someone who uses this particular lighting method. Um, but one of the interesting things about meeting you at the IPCPR is we talked about lighting methods, and we were on the same page for lighting. And Bob Dog wants, wants to know if you could talk a little bit about your lighting method and, and maybe talk about how you came about that. Of course. Actually, I always do uh, tell everybody it's... Uh, the best lighting method is the one you are more comfortable with. Now, uh, with your question, the one I use, I normally light my cigar, make sure it's well lit, especially from the outside to the inside, and then cut the cigar. But remember, light the cigar doesn't mean burning the cigar. It's using the heat, not the flame, or the, or, 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 or the, or the fire, or the lighter, or the matches to you, or the cigar spirit that you're using. So, and the reason why I do that is that when you light your cigars and when the cigars is ready and you have the patient yeah. and then you mm. cut, That's there terrible. is no, it's, mm. it's right. more the escape from the top and it doesn't influence your wow. first draw. So it's the cleanest, in the cleanest draw you're ever going to have. Good. Yeah, and the the way I because I, I you know mm. I've talked a little bit about it. I want to do cigar reviews now because um, I've I've demonstrated the method on uh, video and and the way I described it is you know you've got a, a typically most people would use a butane torch and you talk about a torch being you know well in excess of a thousand degrees in some cases twelve hundred degrees and someone has gone to great lengths and great complexity in making the tobaccos line up to burn this cigar at a particular rate and a particular temperature mm -hmm. and the last thing you want to do is introduce thousand degree heat and the thousand degree gases along the length of your cigar so I've, I've put the challenge out there for people you know and I, I agree with you you know use use what you're comfortable with but if you have the opportunity to try it try lighting your cigar before you cut it and I think you'll notice a difference especially if, you know for the first inch two inches I I notice a big big difference with the way my cigars uh, smoke for the first two inches for, versus for your first draw it's yeah. the cleanest draw you're ever going to have it, it, you'll be like wow that's that's completely different I, I it's always I, I tell people try it with a cigar you already tried before so you can see the difference between one or the other I remember when you said that on the show Enrique I, and I mm -hmm. thought it was fascinating and speaking of lighting and uh, cutting cigars too um, I won't mention the, the manufacturer, um, but uh, I don't want to plug manufacturers on the show, but <clears throat> there's a particular lighter and cutter uh, that I received as a gift, and there's some interesting things uh, that make me really like this combination. Now, one is the lighter is a triple flame, but the triple flame comes to a point, right? So if it's I wider, you're talking about. yeah, you have, a, when it's wider, you have more of a chance of like burning that and scorching that wrapper. When it comes to a point, you can be a little more precise, toast your cigar, light your cigar. Now, the cut, 
And I am not a big fan of the V cut. I have never been a fan of the V cut. And let me tell you, <laughs> doing the you know being in cigars and reviewing them for the past you know almost four or five years, I've tried every single kind of cut. I've tried the punch cut, the straight cut, the bullet cut, the scissors, different kinds of scissors, different kinds of cutters, the whole gamut, right? People have given them to me. I've tried the, the, the shuriken. It's like a ninja cut. I've tried all these newfangled things. I've never been a big fan of the V-cut. However, I have a V-cut that is a very, very deep channel V-cut. In fact, I wish I had, I had cut my cigar with it tonight. What I've been noticing <clears throat> for the past couple of weeks since I've been using it is when you cut a deep V-cut channel, the flavors change. It changes mm -hmm. the whole dynamic of the cigar. I get a better draw from my cigars, and I get more of that flavor that, that kind of hits your palate more instantaneously than I do with any other kind of cut. So I've been mm -hmm. a huge fan of a very deep channel because it puts more surface area, right? If you think about a flat surface area, but then if you think about a V, like mathematically, that's more surface area, right? And of it's course. allowing you to draw more. Um, and I've just... I've been a huge fan of it. Even smaller ring gauges, I use the deep V cut. It's worked out really well for me. That's you know, good. Paul, I'm I'm absolutely in the same boat. I switched to V cut strictly about a year and a half ago, um, and and I was kind of in the same boat. I tried punches, I tried guillotines, I tried uh, mm. shuriken cutters, I tried everything. And I think you know, I, the way I describe a V cut is it's the best of a combination of a punch and I know why a lot of people use punch because you get such a great draw and you get so much flavor complexity of the cigar with with the ease of a guillotine because you're not you know with a punt or with a v-cut and I know the v-cut you're talking about um, I, I alternate between that and a shallow V depending on the size of the uh, the ring gauge but what's really nice about it is you, you, it's it's pretty error free you, you, yes. you can use it and you don't you know you're not going to risk damaging the cap for the most part. You're right. not going to risk I agree. cutting too deep. When you cut it with the V, I've had much less, like, all the bits of tobacco in my mouth, unraveling of the cigar. Like, I just find it's it's been fabulous for me all around. And I, I, normally that, use, I normally use a straight cut. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it, that's what I've been using. I, I try everything from, from, like you said, for punch, for body cut, uh, V cut, everything. My preference for it is it, it's a straight cut. Well, it does a straight cut, it, like uh, it gives you a perfect atmosphere of the entire tube of the cigar. So you can draw perfectly in all the aspects of it. If you do a point, a bullet uh, a point, or, or, or a B cut, it gets to a point and you they're narrowing to a one alley, and that's a, a it might influence a, a your cigar. But you know what? This is anybody's preference so mm -hmm. you know everybody can do it however they prefer so Paul I gotta ask because uh, I'm really eager to get into my Florida Canyon 18 how is that second pairing going for you really well uh, as uh, <clears throat> my good friend Keith was noticing a lot of caramel with this particular rum it's got a, a, a very not a whole lot of like body or complexity but it's got a very heavy caramel note to it yeah, the ice, I put two ice cubes, <clears throat> I put two cubes in it, and um, Keith is right, yeah, it kind of watered it down, watered it down a little bit, I probably should have just dropped one cube or a nice ball uh, in it, but um, some good caramel notes on this, on this rum, I mean, you can, you can sip it, like I said, neat, or um, I like to use it, in, I like to use it in cocktails too, though. Yeah. I just want to remind our audience that you're tuned to Sharing Our Pairings, episode 68, 1502 with Enrique Sanchez. I'm your host, John the Cigar Surgeon. We're broadcast around the world, picked up on the Armed Forces Radio Network. We're our station in the world. We appreciate you tuning in. If you're listening to my podcast, thanks very much. I'm joined by my guest co-host, Paul Asadorian from Stogie Geeks, and of course, our guest, Enrique Sanchez of 1502. And just a reminder to your audience that we're not just smoking a cigar. We're smoking a 1502. That's right. And today is May 4th, right? That's I got my Star Wars hat on. I May see. the 4th be with be you. With right? you. The I was, be with that's you. why I was oh, adorning yes. my Star Wars hat, other than I'm a big Star Wars nerd. Absolutely. Not as much as some of my friends. Me too. Me too. Don't worry about that. I love that. My, my <laughs> friend, um, Kevin, is such a Star Wars nerd. We'll be in general conversation, and I'll overhear him saying things like, oh, I have an extra Chewbacca costume if you want to borrow one. And I'm like, dude, 
You are like the biggest Star Wars nerd I've ever met in my entire life. That's like fantastic. it's astonishing how much of a Star Wars nerd that he is. So. Oh yeah, he be made that one. So he does not only have one Chewbacca costume; he has two. He has two, Chewbacca. and he has stilts that he wears with his Chewbacca costume, and he walks around in his stilts in his neighborhood to practice. You can imagine what the neighbors must uh, think of him. <laughs> that is a I would think more. Uh, uh, imagine that smoking a cigar. That could be a little bit dangerous or fun. Well, you know, it's interesting, Enrique, when we talk about wearing costumes and Halloween and stuff like that, I tailor my Halloween costumes around whether or not I'm going to be able to smoke a cigar safely in that particular costume, which you really have to put some thought into your costume, because i got to be able to have a cigar on Halloween. So, Of course, of course. So I'm going to get into my last pairing here because I'm uh, super eager to talk about this. So it's it's kind of a twofer. Dun, dun, dun. So, John, your to... drinking pace is... Is I'm on just par tearing tonight. it up. You're tearing, you're, you're tearing killing up. me. You're killing so, me. So now, I, I, we had a guest on uh, last week, <clears> who, uh, wonderful gentleman, Claudio from Mbacho, and he is a big fan of the Florida Canyon as well. Now, what's interesting is I've got a couple different bottles of Florida Canyon. Now, Enrique, you are, as I understand, a bit of an aficionado when it comes to Florida Canyon, so maybe you can clarify for me. I've got this bottle of Florida Canyon, which I think is the older bottle of Florida Canyon, and then I've got this bottle of Florida Canyon. Which it, it, now is this the newer bottle of Florida Canada? Do you know, or is this, or is this the newer bottle of, of Florida Canada? Uh, it's the new packaging. Uh, the, the, one, the one you have that's a little bit more rounded. That oh, was the okay. old packaging. That the, the one is more a little bit more square. The one you, you hold in to your left will be. Uh, that, 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 that will be the new packaging. Interesting. Yeah, they, they, they changed the, the entire uh, packaging. Uh, maybe it was like two years ago, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. And that's how it, 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 that's where you had the both of them. But uh, it, it, the 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 wrong as it is, it, it should be must be exactly the same. So what the reason I've got these both is I'm putting that to the test. I'm going to put that to the test here. I'm going to have a little bit of this 18 or maybe a lot of this 18, and then I'm going to pour the other 18. One of the things I think I really like about this, and we're off topic, but the old one just had a, a, a screw cap, which is perfectly reasonable. I, you know, you don't need a fancy cap, but I do appreciate that they put a little bit of extra effort into the new packaging. Yeah, the cork. Look at that, look mm-hmm. at that cork. You know, I love to see a little bit of cork. It's got the nice Florida Canyon in the cap. And uh, I'm going to take yeah. some sips of that. Uh, as you get into your second pairing, Paul, what do you got going on for number two? My number second three, pairing is. Um, is a rum that um, I may be only one of, like, maybe ten people in the world to have a bottle of this rum. Ultra exclusive. Um, and this is called the Lost Rum, uh, also known as Hacker Hooch. So uh, for those that don't know, I'm in the computer security hacking uh, world. And uh, it's very much a community, just as cigars is a community. Uh, the hacking world uh, is a community as well. The hacking community, I should say. And um, a very different community. Um, but, uh, you know, some awesome people. Such a diverse uh, group of people in the security community. And um, a lot of people in security, I mean, we, we work a lot of hours. We work long hours behind a computer, locked in our office, not outside. So... When we take to branching out from being computer nerds, we like to do different things. Um, some friends of mine uh, decided to uh, brew some rum. So I can get in there on the, the label. They custom printed a label. Uh, <clears throat> they say that it's um, 40% alcohol by volume-ish is what they put. Uh, and of course they got the, you know, the pirate Johnny Depp on the yeah. label, and they were very kind enough to uh, to gift us some of this rum. And I want to say this is, it smells like apple pie. It's like an apple pie wow. kind of rum. Um, so it's really cool. Um, we hack computers and software all day long. When we take on other projects, we like to hack distilling and fermentation processes uh, like with rum and come up with some of our own, <laughs> our own things. So I've actually got a couple of, uh, a lot of custom kind of uh, distilled spirits uh, that have been gifted to me over the years uh, and this is one of them so so I'm going to I'm going to talk awesome. a little bit about my pairing here Enrique and then I'll give you a chance to chime in so what I really like about the 1502 is that 
again, it's it's a full-bodied cigar, and it's you know when we talk about body, it's not a cigar that's going to blast you in the face in terms of um, wrecking your palate because there's a lot of nuances. And what I like about this cigar is as it progresses, you know, you get a, a nice flavor transition between the first third and the second third, and it's kind of moved away from sort of the rich, earthy tobacco. And now I'm getting a lot of um, sweetness and a lot of nuttiness. And, you know, the timing couldn't be better because for me, as I'm sipping my Florida Kenny 18, you know, that's great because this Florida Kenny 18 has uh, great um, fruit notes to it, tropical fruit notes to it, some really nice vanilla. And it's, uh, it's you know, I wouldn't describe it as light, but it's, it's not um, blasting my palate away. So... Yeah. In, in a lot of ways, you know, where I'm at with this cigar and where I'm at now with this rum, I think goes really, really well together. That's awesome. Well, it's, it's very interesting you mentioned that uh, about the balance in, in all 15-2 cigars, especially the 15 to Black Golden we enjoy right now, John. Uh, remember, there are three signatures in, 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 on all my cigars. Uh, the, one, the first signature will be the cigar lock, you know, the, the wrapper just around the edge of, 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 of the foot of the cigar. Uh, and the, the second signature, a draw, it has to be a perfect draw. Third signature, I always blame for flavor and complexity, not for strength. In all five lines, you definitely see a strength is a great combination of, of my blends, but it's not the most important part of it. Uh, when you have a well-balanced blend, a well-balanced cigar, you always make sure that the strength overpowers the flavor of the cigar. If it does, you, uh, well, I'm, I'm sure there are people that love the part. It's like, give me the strong, give me the strong, give me the strong. But what I, I enjoy for a cigar is the flavor and the complexity in it. And that's how I blend my cigars to be. I, you know, flavor for me, Enrique, uh, is the most important thing. Of course. Um, all those flavors taste, right? I would say secondary to that are some of my other, like, smoking characteristics things. And one of the things that I love is a box press cigar because it gives me that burn, draw, and construction that really yes. hits my personal kind of profile for how I like to smoke a cigar. I like a little more smoke. I like a little more of a loose draw than I think the industry would de deem as like traditional, right? And a box press gives you that because typically when you box press, you're taking a few leaves out to get that press and that box press gives you like a much a much better draw produces a little more smoke that that makes the box press one of my <clears throat> all-time favorite formats for just that reason now yeah. there's a balance right it can't be like too tight in terms of a, a draw but it can't be too loose either and I, I like that like just a little bit balance. on the, the looser side right and it gives me it can't burn hot either, but I had like a little more smoke and a little bit of a looser draw, and that's what I gravitate towards all the time. And that's one thing I like about your line of cigars, Enrique, and I'm not just saying this because you're on the show, is because you <clears throat> you love the box press. You a lot of your almost all your cigars, right, are box pressed. All, uh, all of my cigars day. so far, yeah. so far. You know, it, it's Fantastic. interesting when we, when we work in the bling and we get the, the bling that we're, we're looking for, we got it mm. right. Apple. Uh, I had the fact you make me all the Divitolas rounded and box press. So mm. I can decide which That's one, good, right? what Vitola should I, go, should I go, what Vitola should be released, what Vitola that blend specific Apple, Apple. need to do a little, a little twist Apple. Uh, Apple. Uh, or not to be released at all and, and, and see and see the shape as well. If it's a rounded or it's box press. Mm. And the fact is always like, That's yeah, dangerous. yeah, we know you, yeah. You, you're going to do box press. And like, no, nope, we don't know that for sure. And then, of course, the coins like, yeah, it's going to be box press. And they're like, yeah, we knew about it. And it, it does give you a perfect touch of a box press cigar versus a round cigar. That mm -hmm. age in, 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 the, in the flavor, in the, in the strength, and in that combination, it does, it's a complete non cigar. And we did a testing. I said it was in Europe. We sent for the same Bonchero, uh, a, a, I, was, I think it was a, 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 a 20, 15 or 2 cigars of each of the line, Emerald Ruby and the Black Gold. Rounded and box press from the same table, so there was no way it's going to be something different. And they, in, in, in different activities, they gave that they took the band off, they give it to the people in, in, in the event. Uh, I don't know if first what they gave the round cigars and then the box press cigars all, all the other way around, 
but you know they all smoked the first cigar, then they would give the second one. Everybody in that event thought they were smoking a completely different cigar, mm. and yep. that was a blind testing. So it, it does <clears throat> it does make a difference, big time. Yeah, I think one of the things that you know, because I I agree with you, Paula and Enrique. I think for me, <clears throat> box presses are not only the the draw is excellent, but I think there's there's just something natural about a, a box or square press. It fits more naturally in your mouth, and yeah. you know we we don't necessarily talk a lot about that, but I think it just rests comfortably in your, more comfortable in your mouth, and it just feels more natural when you're holding it. You know, it naturally rests between your fingers a little bit better, and it rests yeah. in your mouth a little bit better. A, a great example of that is, and I want to say it's a 58 ring gauge in the Avo Synchro Nicaragua. That's a mm. large ring gauge cigar, but they box press it. And La Flor Dominicana has done similar things with their larger yeah. ring gauge cigars. They box press them. And it just makes for, for me, like part of my rating is the smoking characteristics and the smoking experience. It adds in a positive way in my mind when you box press a cigar to that smoking experience. So, uh, and I have to say, this 1502XO, very, I'm, I want to buy a box of these. <laughs> I do. I got to well, get a box of these. They, these are getting better with age. Now, there's already 18-year-old oh. tobacco in them, but since the last time I've smoked them, I, I enjoyed this one even better than the last one. You know what? I did smoke. I, I, I was uh, in late February. One of the prototypes in, in, was two year and a half ago, mm -hmm. and it's much better now. So I, only if I can tell you, they get better by time. But that's, you know, when we talk about the Stogie Geeks rating system, that kind of plays into it is you want to buy more because we try and recognize the aging potential. And I'm not saying there's an exact science behind it. Sometimes it's kind of a gut feeling. Sometimes it's certain characteristics of the tobacco and the way it smokes. We think it's going to age better over time and, and hold up to the test of time. So yeah. a year from now, three years from now, five years from now, ten years from now, is that cigar going to be smoking better or the same or, or different or, or stay at that level of rating that we give it? And, and this is this XO, I think, will will do that well, for sure. One of the things I do when I do blending boards, I like to take my time. I like to experience uh, in, in years how the blend is going to be. So I, uh, I, I, I most of the time, and I guess it, I know how it's going to be later on. Uh, for example. Uh, one of the surprise, like my, my distributor here in the United States, one of these day, uh, that was like three months ago, he called me and it's like, Enrique, I have a surprise for you. I'm like, oh, really? Well, no surprise, and they're over. So I get, I get a box in the mail, I open it up, and it's a, it's a box of 1502 Emerald. And like, that's weird. Why would you send me a box of my own right. cigars? It, it is like a, like a sign, like, like a sign, like he's saying, you know, uh, bye bye, or so, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, like, like, it kind of, Intrigued about it, so I grab the box and look at it like, wait a second, no way. I start looking at the box, it's like production number one. Wow, wow, and I was like, whoa, of course. I had a, I opened it, they, they were torpedoes and they were not box press, they were round cigars. The first production and the torpedoes they were rounded. So wow. I, I, I still have a couple left in my humor, and I tried it, and, and that's production 2010. <clears throat> it was even better that today. It was different, but better. Mm. So I, I, I always guarantee you, uh, in our cigars, the aging is going to be a, a, a good thing for our cigars as well. Now, what's interesting, Enrique, you and I share a love for a particular lady. Hmm. Did you know that? Her, name is? Is her name is Mary, also known as the Bloody Mary. <laughs> huge fan. Huge fan of the Bloody Mary. Love my Bloody Marys. Bloody Marys are very helpful and yes. very lovely. Very, oh, they're, well, it's it's like a it's like a health drink. I mean, it has vodka in it, but there's a lot of nutrients in there. There's a lot going on in a Bloody Mary. 
Uh, and it's it's difficult to pair a Bloody Mary with a cigar. Speaking of pairings, John. I, and, I'm gonna and, I'm gonna I'm gonna step in, and I, I hate to cut you off there, but um, I I just need to wrap up the Armed Forces Radio Network segment, and maybe we can talk about a little bit about the uh, Bloody Marys in our After Dark segment here, because uh, I think I can add a lot to that, especially being a Canadian. We've got a little bit of a take on that. Oh, really? Um, Interesting. Okay. Yeah, we've got a we've got a funky <laughs> take, but uh, I, I want to thank Enrique for being on for our Armed Forces Radio Network segment. Uh, Paul, thanks very much for being our guest co-host. Thanks, John. Uh, always a pleasure and uh, for all our armed forces radio networks listeners out there we hope wherever you are in the world you're staying safe and you have the chance to enjoy a delicious 1502 cigar and just remember it's not a cigar it's a 1502, it's a 1502. and uh, as we see on sharing our parents drink better but drink less all right so we're back and this is our uh we're still live um this is our uh, after dark segment so, so we can, hold on i'm gonna try and get keith in on this hold on roger that so uh enrique we are we of course still being broadcast live on the internet uh but we we are All limited right. to 58 minutes for our armed forces radio network segment but uh sorry to cut you off there paul uh, i def definitely want to hear the rest of what you're talking Hello. about for the uh, bloody mary because uh we have uh, a, unique a unique take, take on, on that, that up here in canada. canada hello can you guys still hear me very faint. Very faint. I'll try and get. Hold on, I can fix that. Get a little bit of echo too. Can get you guys hear me now? Too. Yep. Can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. I can hear you. I can hear you. Yeah. So Bloody Marys are awesome. And I have yet to pair an emerald with the oh, Bloody Mary. Oh, you have to. You have to. And it's a hard drink to pair a cigar with. It's probably the most difficult drink, like spirit-wise, yeah, alcoholic yeah. adult beverage, to pair a cigar with. So, because it, it, it just, well, so the horse, you know what, it, a lot of it is the horseradish. If you like it it's spicy, summer. it's adding a spicy component to it. I put a little bit of lime juice, a little bit of either pickle juice or olive juice in it. Um... I like to add uh, Worcestershire sauce to mine. Um, what else do I add? Celery bitters I add to mine. Uh, so there's a lot going on in the Bloody Mary. Oh, my Bloody Mary has like, has like 18 different ingredients when I'm making a blend. It takes me forever to make one of my Bloody Marys. There's salt, pepper, celery salt, all kinds of stuff going on in there. So I have so a funny because Go ahead. Do you guys, Do you guys remember, remember, John, I think you were there in IPCCR. Three, two, two IPCPs IPCPs ago. Well. The first, the first one, one in Vegas. Vegas. Uh, uh, I, remember I remember one day, day uh, walking to the, the booth. booth. You guys, you guys were, were next to me in, in the booth. Cigar Federation. And, and, uh, and I was dying for a Bloody Mary. And I, and I told... Uh, 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 who was the... Uh, Blue, uh, Blue Catfish. Uh, it, 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 was, it, it was you in the time. Yep. To get me a Bloody Mary. And he went and gave me a Bloody Mary. And I was smoking a 15 to Emerald. So uh, that's when I found out it was a great pairing. I was like, oh, my God, this is beautiful. So since that time, the funny thing, every time I go to IPCPR every day, somehow it's a Bloody Mary in my booth waiting for me. So except for last IPCPR in New Orleans, in which in New Orleans it's almost like the capital of Bloody Marys. It's, you know, it, it, that's, I remember in, in, in 1998, Having a uh, Bloody Mary with a, with, with a big uh, cheeseburger Hello. for breakfast. Coming through. So it, w w I got the first day, no Bloody Mary. I'm like, hmm, okay. I got the second day, no Bloody Mary. Third wow. day, no Bloody Mary. The fourth day, I'm like sitting down. It's like, okay, guys, I'm not working until somebody gets me a Bloody Mary. I'm like, I don't care if somebody <laughs> comes here and it's tell me I want to buy one million boxes. I don't care. And I'm not moving from this year. I'm going to strike until get somebody reach out. He's like, here's your Bloody Mary. It's like, Oh, thank, thank now, you. Now, the thank other beautiful box, thing, box, <laughs> the other beautiful thing about a Bloody Mary, and I usually make them on Fridays, like it's usually Bloody Mary Friday uh, in the office slash studio uh, where the guys are doing a lot of post-production. I add all kinds of food. So it's almost like a oh, meal. Cool. I put celery, yeah. olives, stuffed olives, cherry tomatoes, Chicken bacon, beans. Shrimp. Shrimp. I mean, if, if I have fried chicken, I'll add fried chicken. I'll add mini sliders. Like it's a whole bacon. The, the whole experience. Yeah. The whole experience. Yeah. It's it's like having a, a meat a, a, or all kind of food in the same place. I remember in Pittsburgh one day we were after one of the events, 
uh, I need a Bloody Mary, so I got a Bloody Mary for breakfast. Mm. I didn't. I was not hungry for the entire day. Yeah, it's like, very filling. Jesus, what is what is this? It's like it's perfect. I feel perfect now. Oh, and Keith, <laughs> you get this horseradish. Where did you get that horseradish? Long oh, Island. Island. Long, he got this horseradish from Long Island. It is like the most delicious horseradish I've ever had in my entire life. It's so good. So, so now I got to ask you guys: Have you ever heard of a? Because this is an entirely not only is this a Canadian thing, but this this drink, this cocktail, was created in my home city of Calgary. Have you ever heard of a Caesar before? No. What's a Caesar? Is that like a Bloody Mary with like gin or bourbon? No, it's it's more funky than that. So they start. This is this is a drink that is consumed. I think the the annual stats of this. There's like 150 million liters of this consumed every year in Canada. That's how popular. Do it is. they serve it at Tim Hortons? They do not serve it at Tim Hortons, <laughs> but they serve it everywhere else. Okay. So it's so essentially you take a Caesar base, and instead of just the the tomatoes like the tomato juice, it's called <clears throat> clamato juice. Yes. Uh, Have you heard of this? I've heard of that. It's clam juice and it's tomato clam juice. juice. Clam juice and tomato juice. A lot juice. of people will add tomato. clam juice to their tomato juice yeah. and put that in their Bloody Mary. I'm not a huge fan of it. Yeah. It kind of irritates my stomach, to be honest with you. And being from Rhode Island, we're like the home of the caw hog. We're like the home yeah. of clams. Yeah, that's um, awesome. I so like think, to add... You think that so, would be a Rhode Island thing, right? <laughs> yeah, and there are Bloody Mary mixes that you can buy here in Rhode Island in the supermarkets that have clam juice in them. Absolutely. And they're, they taste good. They just, I don't know, they tend to irritate my stomach. But um, I like to add either pickle juice or even better, I like olive juice and olive brine mm. to my Bloody Marys better than the pickle juice. I've experimented with both. Oh, and stuffed olives. <clears throat> <We've, clears throat> so... John, to go back to, let's back up for a second, talk about our martinis, which go fantastic with cigars. I don't know why, and I never thought dirty they would. Martini. Dirty martinis. So Keith told me how to make a dirty martini, and it's very simple. You take vodka. Tito's vodka works the best because it's very briny. Frozen. You've got to freeze the vodka. You've got to freeze the glass. Both of those things have to be frozen in the freezer. You take them out. You pour the vodka over ice, and you add olive juice. You shake it. Pour it in the glass, and you add stuffed olives. I think blue shake cheese. Shaken, not stirred. Yes, shaken, not stirred. Blue cheese, stuffed olives. The pearl ones are, are, are probably the best ones that we've found. And we've, I think Keith and I have tasted at least a dozen or more different kinds of olives and like tried all of the different olive juices, mm. uh, and we have our favorites. There's one that I ordered from Amazon. I can't remember the name of it. It's actually an olive juice you order... Oh, it's um, brown. In a bottle. It's brown. It's like, it's like vinegar and uh, salt and olive brine. That one's really good. We get from a food distributor this like gallon jug full of olives. That has to be the best olive juice. So the olive wow. juice matters oh, when you course. make a dirty martini. Absolutely. Well, of course. The glass has to be frozen. The vodka has to be frozen. Frozen glass, frozen vodka, stuffed olives, really good olive juice. And I tell you what. Shake the hell out of it. And martinis they're like tits one is not enough and three is too many oh, <laughs> now we're in the after dark show i can tell you my the philosophy that we have Absolutely. about martinis <laughs> enrique like that one you know what i think it is i think it's that that saltiness character the saltiness yes the saltiness it, it oh, just it, it stogie fires up santa stogie santa can't get enough of our dirty martinis and he is like a total gimme scotch neat kind of person and we give him our dirty martinis and he's like i could drink these all day long and, and you can't because you, you pass good. out before you can have your fourth one <laughs> i've, I've uh, heard a few episodes on uh, stogie geeks where uh he was close to passing out of it. <laughs> yeah it's uh they're dangerous but they go really well with cigars <clears throat> right, not so, so much like the flavor it's more like a a taste thing right like sweet salty sour savory bitter uh, it's that saltiness component that just adds to the, yeah. Well, I, ha I have a question now. That since we'll be talking about Brian Marys and martinis. Uh, am I going to have my my Brian Marys in, in this IPCPR somehow? I, I think we are guaranteed to make that happen. We're back at the uh, at Las Vegas, mm. and uh, Enrique, awesome. we're going to make that happen one way or the other. Guaranteed. Anybody who brings me a Brian Mary in the morning, it gets a free 15 or two. 
I've been That's I've been known sure. to walk around with like pictures of, of Bloody Marys. <laughs> I'm like the, that. I'm the, I'm the family member that like when we have a party at our house or we go to someone else's house, like I have my picture of Bloody Marys and all the fixings to go with it. And it's funny because my wife will be like, "Well, no one in our family really is a big drinker." When I make Bloody Marys, people are like, "Yeah, round, uh, round two, down. like my glass is empty. I need more." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we we got a deal for IPCPR. All right, Bloody Marys Absolutely. and then the martinis. We're good. We, we, we will survive. <laughs> and Enrique, if you're ever in Rhode Island, our freezer in our studio primarily houses gallon jugs of Tito's vodka and frozen glasses. That's what's occupying our freezer right now. In addition to some shrimp, and we're also going to stock some bacon as well. So oh, now now you're trying to lower me to Rhode Island. Yes, That's you need to come to Rhode Island, make an in-studio appearance. I would love doing that. That's for sure. And actually, we, we have the ability now. We have uh, uh, So tomorrow night on the Stogie Geek Show, we're going to have, uh, I can't remember his name, I, 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 I apologize, but he is like the steak person in Montana. Like he makes oh. these premium high-end steaks. He sent us some steaks. He also makes some vodka. So we have this cranberry tea infused vodka. And uh, Phil Zangi from Debonair made him some cigars called the Cattle Baron, which he sent us as well. So on the segment tomorrow night on the Stoic Geeks, we're going to grill steaks. We're going to have his cranberry vodka, and we're going to have his cigars all on the Damn. show. So I had to, like, set up the studio with these cast iron frying pans and this, like, camping stove in the studio. So we had the full capability to, like, make bacon and steak and all the stuff in the studio now. So we're, we're fully we're, nice. we're well, equipped. We're well equipped to do uh, spirits, cigars, and now some food as well. Well, so if, if it's ever... Uh, uh, a zombie apocalypse, I know where I'm going to be. Mm, that's right. Come to the Stogie Geek <laughs> studio. Now, plenty just, of cigars, plenty of booze, and food. Now, just bring you back to Nicaragua. Um, of course, I'm in Alberta, and Alberta is commonly called the Texas of Canada because, you know, we pride ourselves in our beef. And i got to say, one of, the, you know, one of the things that really impressed me about Nicaragua that I was not expecting was the quality of beef and steak down there. Yeah. And, you know, I am a absolutely 100% steak aficionado, and uh, that's one of the things that was just blew me away is going out to Nicaragua, having a steak down there. The steak quality in Nicaragua is out of this world. It's beautiful. Phenomenal. I mean, every time that I go to Nicaragua, I always come back with two cases of meat. I, ha mm. I have a fridge in my garage just to store my meat for Nicaragua. You got the flavor, it's like nothing else you ever tried before. It's a, and I've been uh, almost everywhere, uh, uh, traveling, going everywhere. Um, but the flavor of the meat in Nicaragua, it's something unbelievable. My friends in uh, computer security are big into the Brazilian steakhouses. Oh, oh yeah. Every time we go out, Bro they always, they always like Brazilian barbecue, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Brazilian. They love steak. Um, I mean, we go to Morton's sometimes too. Um, because the security industry, I mean, we're we're not hurting for business, right? Like, there's a lot of people hacking into stuff, keeping us very well employed, right? Uh, we go to Morton's, uh, and they also love the Brazilian. What's the Brazilian barbecue place in uh, in Vegas? Uh, what's it called? But there's a chain that that does it. Yeah, I can't remember the name. of John Strand loves this place. We go there every time we're in Vegas. You're a meat lover, which you are. Oh my like, God! Like Brazil, Brazil, something Samba? like that. Uh, it's something like that, but I, I every time I go there, I get the meat sweats, right? Like yeah. I eat so much meat, <laughs> like I'm sweating meat yes. profusely. Like that's yeah. you, you can't go to a Brazilian barbecue place and not have the meat sweats, right? How could you? Oh, uh, I, I know how that goes. I'm not gonna... I we, uh... we go to Brazilian barbecue, then we go to Casa Fuente and we have cigars, and it's just a I'm in Casa the, Fuente the and I'm saw... sweating. Do you saw that the new uh, Monte Cristo Lounge in the Caesar? I heard about that. I saw the news article. I got to check that out. I, I was there two weeks ago. It is beautiful. Really? Beautiful tour. I like Caesars. I went to a lot of conferences at Caesars. A lot. Yeah. It's, it's a very nice place, that's for sure. Yeah. It's it's older, but they've been able to keep up. They've done a lot of renovations in, the, in Caesars over the years. Yeah. I got my Blind Mary in Caesars. That, that, that sound was there. That as was well. pretty good. 
It was good. It was good. Can't complain. I was happy. Enrique, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to see if there's some way I can I can hook you up with trying a Bloody Mary and then trying a, a official Canadian Caesar when we're down at the IPCPR because uh, you know, I feel like that's that's an experience. If you haven't had a Caesar before, I feel like you got to try one and see if you enjoy Sounds. it because. Like Sounds I said, good. you know, we we it's a it's a, a national drink here. It's we consume so much of it. It's so delicious. And what is I a Caesar it. again, John? So again, the the base of it is is this clamato, and I think you know, okay. Um, the the thing to think is because people hear clam juice and they think oh, that's you know that's bizarre. That's no, weird. but it's it's good. The clam it's, juice because it's got that salty component. It's got that to salty it. yeah. component. Yeah. But they blend it in such a way that the clam juice is not overpowering. It just gives you a little bit mm. of zip. And a little bit of saltiness. Then you add the Worcestershire. You yeah. Have the the rim. So the, it's it's a whole process. When you go to a, a place anywhere here in Calgary, mm -hmm. any any bar you go to, you can get a good quality Caesar because they'll put the the salt rimmer on it with the Caesar yeah. salt, and then they put Tabasco sauce in it. They put the Worcestershire sauce in it. You, you want to you, try that? It's yeah, in vodka. They make it like a Bloody Mary, but it's basically like clamato. Mary, but it's clamato. With a little bit of zip to it, and uh, you know, a little bit of heat, a lot of saltiness, and you know, again, I think the way they blend it here, that clam juice is an accent. It doesn't overpower the drink, yeah. but it, it's phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. That's great. Yeah, in, in well, here in the I summer, will, I, uh, I will be waiting for that in Vegas. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> when it, it's funny when uh, in the summer we go to a, a beach club here, and uh, if the season and the tides are right, I can go in the water. I can dig my feet in the sand, and I can pull up clams. And sometimes I, I pull up so many clams, I can wow. take them home, make my own clam broth, chop up all the clams, and make my own spaghetti and clams. My grandfather used to do the same thing. It's kind of a family tradition. And I tell you what, if you don't like spaghetti and clams, if you've never had them freshly pulled from the sea with my own feet, my own bare feet, I think, adds to the flavor as well. And the whole process, it is like, oh, it is so good. With some shaved parmesan. Shaved parmesan, some white wine, garl oh, fresh garlic. Oh, beautiful. You're making me hope for oh. Las Vegas food at this point. Yeah, yeah. Some white wine. I would drink white wine with that all day long, too. Yes. <clears throat> all right, well, last, uh, last audience question here for Enrique, because uh, I've been smoking this 1502 Black Gold and, and loving every minute of it. Uh, Bob Dog wants to know, what is your spirit that you think is the ideal pairing for the black gold. For the black gold, huh. that's a very. We're gonna put you on the hot seat. Uh, no, but I mean, there's so many, so that that's that, that trying to choose now is, is gonna be a tough one. Uh, Flor de Caña for sure. That that like the one you're trying right now, that 18 years old centenario, is a for great sure. pairing for the black gold. Oh that's yeah. for sure. If you want something more, a, 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 another wrong as well, Sacapa. The, 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 yes, the, Zacapa. We didn't talk it, about Zacapa. That's a great choice, it, Enrique. It's, it's, a, great, it's a great rum as well. Uh, and, <clears> and scotch, uh, sometimes I, I do like the double black for Johnny Walker. I always make, always make the joke is that triple the black with a touch of gold. Mm. So you, you got a great pairing there. McAllen, uh, and, McAllen is a good choice in two, Enrique. McAllen, you said that. I, yeah. was, I was, I was going to say that. Yep. The, either my kind of 15 or the 18 is a great pairing as well. Uh, uh, there, there, there's in that line from there. You, you have a lot to choose, but I think those, those, those for me will be the easy ones to go for. So, John, before we go, what which cutter did you think I was talking about? You're definitely talking about the Calibre Deep V. The Calibre Deep V. Deep there's v. a the representative from uh, Calibre lives here in Rhode Island. Um, nice. Less Less Man is his name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He Super came. Nice he came in studio and he gifted us a. And I tell you what. That cutter and the lighter he I'm using the lighter he gave me. This is, is that it still work it? Yeah. it's got that flat or the and it's got a cutter. Nice. This one has a flat cutter with nice. it, which I keep in my pocket Beautiful. all the time because I can cut my cigar and light my cigar and I can carry one thing. And this has been working really, really well. And I know Calibri people have had, you know, mixed reviews with Calibri. The ones they've given me recently, and they're not a sponsor or anything, um, have been working really well. But that deep V cutter is phenomenal. Phenomenal. Yeah, it, I'm, I'm it weighs 100%. like like three tons in your hands when you hold yeah, it. Like it's yeah. yeah. It's a self defense mechanism. It is. Yeah. yeah. 
I'm a, I'm a huge proponent of the V's. Like I said, I've been, I've been using V's now exclusively for a year and a half, and uh, I use them on all my reviews. And I, I think there's something to be said about that, that V cut, whether it's the, uh, the shallow V or the deep V from Clebre. I think 100%, it, it just makes, for me, it, it, you know, it funnels the flavors through that cut. Yes. It leaves that cap intact. You get a lot more of the uh, wrapper influence mm -hmm. on the draw. Um, I love the deep V. I've been, all of the cigars I've reviewed in the past few weeks have been with that deep V, and I, I just love it. I just love it. So, Enrique, I just want to say thank you very much for being on uh, Sharing Our Pairings. Um, you know, it's always a pleasure talking to you, and uh, very much looking forward to seeing you at the IPCBR. Uh, we're going to hook you up with uh, at least one uh, Bloody Mary, if not a, uh, a Caesar. We'll see if we can make that happen. I know that uh, Canadians have been bugging Vegas about the Caesars. I think they're actually carrying Caesar juice there uh, at the various bars, so we'll see if we can make that happen. If not, I'll bring some Caesar mix down with me and make awesome. a Canadian Caesar for you. And, I will Enri make it happen. Enrique is the best smelling man in cigars. And I, I also <laughs> want to say that I, I think Bloody Marys are also like tits, that one is not enough, and three might be too many. <laughs> <laughs> so when you see Enrique, you got to share at least two Bloody Marys with Enrique and yes. smoke a 1502 we, XO. We, we're gonna we're gonna do that. Anybody that, that brings me a Bloody Mary, I will have a 1502 to 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 give it back. So that we're gonna be share, uh, 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 sharing Bloody Marys and 1502. There you go. That is your cocktail challenge for the IPCPR. Paul, thanks again for being a go. guest host. <laughs> thanks, John. Uh, Anytime. Always, always a pleasure. Um, you know, we're going to have to have you on for a, uh, a cocktail show because I think that's long overdue. If yeah, not, um, just a straight up. Uh, you know, I, you can find all of our shows at StoeyGeeks.com. Uh, we do actually three shows right now. The main Stoey Geek show, Stoey Geeks News, and Stoey Geeks Shorts. Um, kind of an exclusive for our uh, listeners of Sharing Our Pairings. We're going to be coming out with a cocktail show, and um, so you'll see a full show that we're going to do on cocktails. Uh, we're going to include cigars in that as well, but uh, primary focus will be cocktails. So uh, we've got that coming out uh, inside of our Stoey Geeks network as well. So, and and you guys are going to be switching from your regular time of Thursday to a new time on Monday, Monday. nights. And when is that happening? <clears throat> uh, May 9th will be our Monday night show, 6:30 p.m. Eastern time is when we'll be broadcasting uh, from uh, here going on forward. Fantastic. Thanks awesome. again, uh, Enrique. I really appreciate being on the show. Check out uh, all of our, uh, our podcast coverage at uh, CigarFederation.com. We're going to have a one embargo show coming up on Monday, and uh, we're going to take a week off. We might have a pre record show next week for sharing our pairings because I'm going to be out of town. Logan's going to be out of town. Rob's going to be out of town uh, as we all prepare for the IPCPR. we got the business to take care of. But uh, as we always say on sharing our pairings, drink better, but drink, drink less. And remember, it's not just a cigar. It's a 1502. It's a 1502. <laughs> Thanks, Enrique. Thanks, John. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, John. Thank you, Paul. Wonderful.